Good morning. Welcome to your daily dose of God time. Um, man, my heart today is just a little bit heavy. Uh, pictures coming out of my alma mater, Oklahoma Baptist University, a place that means so much to, to my wife and I. And we went to college there and uh, hit by a tornado uh, two nights ago. And uh, boy, our hearts and prayers are going out so much to the OBU family and uh, Dr. Heath and others that are just uh, having to deal with that on the front line. I remember being a student there in 1990, my last semester at OBU, and I was meeting with a young college student. Um, uh, he, he, he watches these sometimes. His name is Andy Taylor, and uh, we, we met twice a week. And we were going through this thing called Master Life, which most of you know was very formative in my life. And I remember we had just finished, right? We had just finished Master Life. And we're sitting there in the in the Geiger Center at OBU and on the TV, there's this announcement and everybody's over it. Now, Andy's uh, Andy was there on a GI Bill. He'd already been military. And uh, he jumped out of planes and, and, and you know, he, he already had this very uh, decorated life. But, but in 1990, um, it was our answer to Saddam Hussein's brutal and unprovoked takeover of oil-rich Kuwait. I, I remember sitting there with Andy, you know, and watching the footage of that offensive and Andy, of course, got called up. Saddam called it the mother of all battles. But the truth of the matter was the Iraqi soldiers were ill-equipped to take on America. I remember one memorable scene. The Iraqis surrendered to the U.S. military without even firing a shot. They came out of their bunkers with their hands in the air, this global sign of surrender. And, you know, uh, and, and it reminds me uh, of Psalm 119.48 where it says, and I shall lift up my hands to your commands, which I love. I will meditate on your statutes. See, a surrendered soldier, I lift up my hands to your commands. A surrendered soldier ceased fighting. A surrendered soldier has relinquished his weapons and his rights, and he's now pliable and agreeable to the will of the conqueror. When it comes to God and the commands of God, let me ask you a question. Have you surrendered? In Psalm 119, uh, the psalmist had surrendered to God's commands. He lifted up his hands and surrendered. In Psalm 1, verse 128 of 119, he goes on to say, I esteem right all your precepts concerning everything. In other words, you're right about everything, God. I'm right about nothing. <laughs> he, he, he didn't just surrender to various commandments from God. He surrendered to all of them. Maybe you've noticed how easy it is for us to get in a cafeteria mindset with regard to the commands of God. I mean, we want to pick this one and choose that one to obey, and and, and no, I, I won't have any of that. In other words, I'll have an order of baptism, and uh, I'll have some church membership and some Bible reading and prayer, but you know, I'm going to pass on tithing or serving or submitting to authority or sexual purity. And, and what we forget is it's not a cafeteria. We don't get a choice. I mean, God's word is right concerning everything, not just the things with which you agree. We're to take all of God's commands, I mean, all of them, and surrender them to them. You know, there's no doubt that certain commands are harder for us than other ones. For example, 1 Timothy 4, 7, discipline yourselves for the, pur discipline yourself for the purpose of godliness. Now, that's a difficult command for the person who's undisciplined by nature. I mean, my wife's very disciplined. I mean, she, she sets her mind to something. That's the only thing she's going to do. Uh, me, I got to work a little bit harder at it. But, but what about the difficult commands for you? I mean, maybe sexual purity is a difficult command, command for you to obey. Maybe it's gossip or forgiveness or honesty or integrity or loving your enemy. Here's the secret. Surrender to all of God's commands and see them as right for your life. It doesn't mean that you won't fail from time to time. It simply means your heart is surrendered. And you desire to obey all of God's word because you know it's right for your life 
and it'll produce joy and peace as you walk in your ways. So maybe now, uh, as you, you want to pray, and you want to just lift up your hands and say, God, I surrender. And, and maybe you want to pray something like this, God, I, I'm surrendering anew and afresh to your commands. Just like Jesus said, we, we keep, if we keep your commands, we abide in your love even as Jesus kept his Father's commands and abide in his love. So, Father, I I just pray now that we would do that and that we would see all of your commands as right. Father, this this morning, I also want to pray for my my alma mater at OBU. Um, Even as we're trying to put pieces back together, I thank you, first off, God, that nobody was killed. Thank you for a good plan that was in place. But I also thank you, Father, for what you're going to maybe use this opportunity to accomplish. And I pray, God, that it might bring a student body together even even tighter than they were before. And uh, that this might be a defining moment in their life. That they understand that all that the world can throw at them would be nothing compared to the God that's for them. Help us to remember that same lesson and to see everything that you do is right. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Hope you have an incredible day. Love God, love one another. Now, go be salt and light.